Despite the challenging economic times, residents of Lagos State will have to pay more for waste disposal. We'll look at the developments in the waste management sector of Nigeria's most populous city on The Breakfast today. No voices are expressing displeasure over the absence of a substantive board for the NDDC. Why has it taken President Muhammad Buhari this long to do the need for? We have analysis of this ahead of the program. We'll also have in-depth analysis of some of today's newspaper headlines in North the Press. All these ahead on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. It's a brand new uh, edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. You're welcome. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful morning to you. All right. Uh, interesting uh, conversations I had today on the program. Messi, we know when the same color today. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was, was quite interesting. But anyway, um, we have our top trending segment and uh, interesting on events unfolding uh, in the social space. And what we always do, as we say, on the top trending segment is look at what the discussion has been what issues are shaping conversation on social space, talking about the internet, and then we bring it on air uh, to you know provide some analysis and just get you informed about what's going on. And the first one is quite interesting. I think um, some of the politicians in the country are taking a cue from um, uh, the antics of Donald Trump. Remember how Donald Trump was uh, tweeting when he was president and the things he used to say. I remember seeing a, a Nigerian politician um, uh, uh, Ken Namani, former governor of Enugu State, tweeting and trolling some youngsters on Twitter. <laughs> it was quite interesting. This time, we have um, Nasir El Rafai, who you can see on your screen. He's the governor of Kaduna State, um, former minister of the Federal Capital Territory when Oloshego uh, Obasanjo was president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is the Kaduna State governor. He stirred controversy yesterday, Monday, uh, when he criticized a claim by a Twitter user that about 2 million people would march in Kaduna in support of Peter B, uh, a, an opposition presidential candidate of the Labour uh, Party. A certain Abdullahi Umar Zarma uh, tweeted, Kaduna 2 million march for Peter B, Kaduna 2 million march for Peter B, Kaduna 2 million march for Peter B, Kaduna 2 million march for Peter B. It's like a prayer of uh, one of these churches that I love, I love uh, to to follow their prayers, the Lord's chosen ministry. They, you, know, you have to repeat some things like that. You know, so there you say, I'm a chosen, I'm a chosen, I'm a chosen, I'm a chosen. Uh, this is, a, I don't know if it's a prayer or he actually believes that um, this is what is happening, two million march. So the, the response, Erufai quoted the tweet, you know, and, um, and put up in Kaduna, not Kaduna Twitter, you know, put up a, a laughing emojis on Twitter and saying, I hope you get 200 persons on the streets, including those caught, he put, put it in, um, in uh, not quotation marks, in inverted commas, imports that can't open their shops on Mondays and come and came on the bus last night. I just laugh, Walai Talai, is what he said. So, it, it, you know, then... You know, Walai Talai is one of my favorite... Yeah, you know, it does, yeah, yeah, like truly, truly. Oh, so, it, 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 it's not just, you know, laugh and cast you know, some doubt about the ability of uh, the obedience, like they like to be called, to raise the number of people they say they would have two million on the streets. But also he, he also made a claim that uh, people are coming from where we know he was referring to, which is the Southeast, but he didn't mention Southeast, you know, but um, to, to come to Kaduna for this, you know, I, I don't know where this is, this is becoming something else, you know. So, um, Aerofy's comment on Twitter generated hundreds of thousands of mixed, uh, thousands of mixed reactions with some in support and others against the governor castigating him. Uh, Rufai tweeted at 6.27 a.m. that uh, P2B will be lucky to have 200 persons marching in support of him in Kaduna. Um, the governor posted this, like I said, in reaction to Abdullahi Zarma. All right. Now, in his latest tweet, he put out another tweet, you know, um, also responding to more of, of these, uh, these comments. Uh, I just want to read something here from, from Twitter. Uh, he, in his latest tweet, you know, in his latest tweet, featuring the screenshot 
of a message from Twitter read, uh, the desperation of so-called obedience, that's in inverted commas to put there, uh, knows no bounds. They insult everyone they disagree with, but cannot accept that some find them disagreeable and have opinions too. Uh, one of them in Germany found my tweet too hot to handle and responded below. I still they laugh, is what uh, L. Rufai put out on, on Twitter. Quite interesting times, Mercy. Very interesting times. Uh, so a lot of people have actually been in doubt and are questioning the possibility of Erofi actually putting out that tweet uh, because at, at some point you want to understand if you have Erofi himself, you know, on the key part, typing all of this, or it probably would just be that he employed someone to type this. So, I mean, it's really, it, it's quite worrisome. But um, whatever the case is, some people would say... Is it, is it worrisome? Did you say it's worrisome? Yeah, worrisome. I mean, some people are wondering that how could a governor, you know, tweet this? Well, well, the, you, well you, you could is, see... Is, is, you, a simple, is a simple case of, of, um, of, I think it's a simple case of the, the, those who are in the game meeting in Maple, deciding that they will also play... Those who are in the, in the political game now, you know, deciding they want to play the social media game the way... Uh, some of those who have been playing it recently. I, un I, un I, un I, un I understand to, what's been said. them on the field and say, let's play now. So, so, so you know that so you and I, I actually... That's what I think is playing now. Okay, so, so you know that you and I, I mean, I'm, I'm being very realistic here and we're trying to understand the dynamics uh, because you, we're talking about a governor, right? Uh, a governor, a governor of a state. And that's what we're talking about. But um, you and I actually, you know handle our phones and I'm sure that every other time that you tweet you're the one that's tweeting I don't know if because I haven't seen anyone following you around or yeah. maybe I don't Mer know Mercy. coffee wait now yeah. let me land okay, okay. I don't know if there's someone who's actually mm -hmm. managing your account or tweeting on your behalf but uh, Nigerians haven't really really embraced this really great I mean some persons it's quite surprising that you know a governor a sitting governor would tweet in this way well, I mean well, look at well, that well they'd be surprised you, you know at the end of the day um I think I think the the governors, the politicians, you know, in 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 on the field, not the ones on Twitter. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the politicians on the field. You know, Peter B, uh, Kwan Kwaso, Tinubu, Erufai, um, um, Namani, former governor of Enugu State. So I think some of these guys have said, okay, uh, the, those who have phone, you know, who, who can can tweet, you understand, don't have a. Uh, be a monopoly of violence, like the young people call it now, violence. Uh, that I mean, since this is how it's done, so they I'm sure they want to meet, they want to meet those who who do this violence. There, there's a young, there's a guy. I think his name is Yusuf, who was uh, engaging in a back and forth with uh, Namani, Namani, former governor of uh, Enugu State, about an incident and uh, some statement or tweeting Namani put up. You know, and uh, it's been interesting to see Namani tweeting. A lot, like Inamani took uh, former governor Inamani, he's a senator now, took on this young person, so, so supposedly a young person, and then um, faced him, you know, toe to toe, stood again, toe to toe. All right, and you know the term mercy, water, water, you know. So and the violence, that's one of the things that. So he 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 stood the guy, and the guy deleted a tweet, and Inamani, I think at the end of the day, he really like. Um, won that battle in sorts. That's what people perceived, and they started praising him and all that. So I'm observing something. What I'm observing is that these politicians are saying, um, uh, "It's it's it's we're going to meet you on the field of Twitter, since that's how you guys are playing it. We also play it there with you." And um, I, I I don't see anything wrong if the those who are also are against them are playing it this way, not the politicians, well, but the, the supporters now. I, I, I never said that yeah, there was the, anything. The, the I, I never are, said. Who have been castigating and are playing it this way. So they've also decided to play it this way. You're saying a governor. It, no, I never said there was the anything people are, wrong. Those online, are, uh, this is how they're playing it. So Kofi, if, I never said there was anything they're playing wrong. it this way, then I'm sure they, 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 they would understand that uh, they don't have a monopoly of violence, of violence, like we say. So let, let's allow the, the politicians to. Well, I never said there was anything game. wrong. I only mm. mentioned that uh, it's really surprising for a lot of Nigerians. I mean, you you could also look at the reaction that has no. actually yeah. emanate, emanated mm. from all of that. Mm. Uh, yeah, the fact that people, people surprised. are surprised. It, it's it's been it's been done. Mercy, it's been done on on several. Okay, several so fronts so can you just allow me, you yeah. know, yeah. land no, on my no, thoughts? No, please, please, by all means. I didn't intend to not allow you land on your thoughts. So the point here is, it's not that people are 
surprised or whatever, you, I mean, the term that you have put it. But it's, it's just that uh, no one is saying it is wrong, but everyone is a bit surprised. I mean, you want to begin to ask yourself, how many governors have you seen tweeted in this way? We're in a very sensitive, sensitive time. We're in a very sensitive situation. And Kaduna seemed to be an epicenter of almost a lot of things that, that happens in Nigeria. No one is saying it's wrong, but you know, it's surprising because Nigerians have reacted in that way. You want to look at the tweet and everyone say, oh, really? Are you sure this is actually the handle of uh, you know, the governor of Kaduna State that he will be tweeting this, tweeting in this manner, despite you know, whatever it is that has been put out there? And there's always a saying that two wrongs can never make a right, really. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. um, you know, let's see how all of this actually pans yeah. out. But one uh, thing uh, that uh, we cannot okay. forget is that everyone has a right, according to the Constitution. But I know that that's not the case because there's been a lot of misinterpretation out there. And some people would say that, yeah, that the... Uh, uh, Erufai dismisses the rally. He, he didn't really dismiss it. It was more like a mockery. It was more like saying, hey, are we even sure that you're going to have like 200 persons out there? Two million. And the tweet that actually emanated that reaction or generated the reaction didn't really come from, you know, maybe a verified Twitter handle of Peter Obi. Not that I'm a spokesperson, but I have actually gone through it not to see that, you know, Peter Obi generated that there's going to be. So you have supporters, you have a lot of zealous persons on Twitter. You have people who are very, um, whether or not it's true, because people come out these days and could tweet anything. And someone's saying, okay, two million uh, persons are going to be marching on the streets of Kaduna. And then, you know, the verified Twitter handle of Erufai actually tweeted what he tweeted. And that has not really sat down well with a lot of persons. Well, we're saying that people are being violent on the street of Twitter. But the question is, oh, it's really surprising. So, 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 so Mercy, it, it, it's, it's just, a, um, you know, some analysis to say that uh, to try and read what's going on in the mind of the of the tweet that the person who's putting out the tweet, um, the governor, and then to see maybe this is why some of these politicians are deciding to go play the Twitter game that is being played by, you know, those who have been on Twitter bantering, you know, trolling. And it's, it's, it's for me, there's no surprises here. I mean, the president of the most powerful nation on earth was, was, was really, really uh, on a roll. And, and that didn't really Trump go well. When, when he was on Twitter, he was on a roll, he tweeted things and then, so this is the reality of the world we live in today. You know, um, he who lives by the sword should be prepared to die by the sword. And if you, if you feel that, uh, for me, it's there, there are no issues here. If if you feel that you know, you, you you can go at people and defend your, you know, it's a game. Politics is a game. They play this game. You know, mm. they they, uh, they attack themselves. They shout on TV screens, and then afterwards they go and sit down and shake hands and talk. You understand. So if you feel that you know, um, uh, as a group of pol political supporters, that uh, you can you can do this, the others are also trying to show that they can also do it as well. And it's a game. I, I expect people to just laugh about it, and um, and also continue to play the game. No, no, no. We, we we can we can't say but that we laugh about on. it because it's we know on. that um, uh, you know if you remember what happened sometime, uh, some kind of war that has actually. Uh, you know, broken out. It we're in a very sensitive that. situation. We're in a very sensitive period. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Nigerians should be responsible. I understand that everyone wants to grab power and, you know, this politics has been played around and everyone is interested in their own interests. Political parties are there. The papers, the, uh, you know, the entire purpose would be, you know, to become elected and be in control of power. But we can also not rule out that um, we can constantly be you know, in that way that would incite people and begin to create hatred. We're not even great with being united as a country. And so do we need to even engage in all of this? I mean, that's where it comes from. Yes, everything well, is going on. That's what's going on. But should we engage? Should we continue in this well, dynamic? The, um, for, no, understanding I, that I this understand has happened with different, mm, you know, if you, if, if you look at reality the countries of, our times, of the world. Is, you know, reality of our yeah. times. You know, and, I, um, I think that because they always say that people say that experience is the best teacher, but we can't. A lot of persons have argued that is really experience. Is experience really the best teacher? Or should we leverage on other experiences, you know, Mercy, to I, I, I learn? Think, I, think, I think, like I said, he who lives by the sword should be prepared, prepared to die by... No, and, no, no, and, no, and, no, and, no, no, no. I'm coming, please. And, and so what I think is that um, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with the aspect of, of um, saying, oh, I don't believe that uh, you can muster two million people. And no one uh, is saying that there's anything yeah, wrong that, that's in saying that. That's number one. And, so and so I, I, th I think the... The, the most the most perfect clapback, you know, this is a, it's, 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 you know, 
woke, or some say, you know, the Gen Z language now, the most perfect club back to Aerofight will be to do the talking on the streets, to actually pull up a good crowd that would amount to two million. And mm. let's, let, 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 let him get an answer. You know, no, so, so, so I mean, especially where you feel, it feels like, you know, there's a particular trend. This is not the first time Aerofy has been on the case of Peter Obi. So um, no one actually would be surprised. It feels like it's a trend and it's happening again. But that's on the one hand. As much as it feels like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a clapback. It's a good clapback. We need to engage. But we also need to leverage on the experience of other persons or other countries. Uh, how far have people fared? You, you remember, you know, what happened, the, the two says and the, you know, the experience. Should we continue in this particular light? We're saying that we're at a time where uh, Nigeria has never been divided, was so divided. And do we need people who should understand better, people who, um, you know, are the affairs of, uh, you know, calling the shorts of the country or are the hems of affairs? Uh, should we not understand better? Should we not learn better? That's that's basically okay. it. So nobody's saying that there's anything wrong. It's okay, Maybe you know, to be very woke and to be in the 21st century. But as should as we not? A victim. Yeah, I'm saying it's a sort of interjectment here. I'm saying as even a victim. As you know, you know, in terms of us, when you know those of us who have the opportunity to to address things like this in the media, we we'll call for caution. We we'll say oh, people should be uh, cautious. You know, not attack people not say certain things on Twitter. We get attacked. We get we get we get we get caught up all sorts of names. In fact, some would accuse, you know, media personalities or media people being uh, in one one party or the other simply because you're uh, you're trying to say people should be moderate and should also respect others and should not attack people online. And you say, well they say, well if you're not with us then you're against us. And we get a, I have been attacked I can show you tweets if I attack when I put that stuff out like, oh don't, don't don't say these things. Let's let's you know calm down. Let's let's de escalate the tension in political space. We got attacked. So um, so, 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 I, so I would like to ask you uh, what was your this, reaction? What was your response? Did I, you engage? I, I went home and then I went to my I went to my private business. No, no, that's exactly what so, we're so, saying. So so see but, but you didn't the respond. Aerofy is playing is playing the same the same and, game. And we're saying that we can not Those continue in this the, particular line. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't know, say that. This is the reality. So we understand. It's, it's a reality. Of, of but we're saying that be, for everyone you know, who it's, is it's at the hems of affair, <laughs> I mean, for you, you game. say you're a governor, you're a president. I, play the game. I mean, you're a commissioner. I play the game. We, we expect that you know better. You understand the times and you should be sensitive. Little, this little comments and reaction mm -hmm. or information has actually... A, these de-escalated and in some countries if you if you go through history you will understand that this cost war we, we can't constantly be like this I that's agree, what i'm saying agree, as Messi, much as there's nothing wrong we but we can't we say, you know we can't also, endorse it because you can't can say do? that two right two wrongs anyway, can make a on. right yeah. but we move away from that um we look at another issue which is also i really don't know if we're going to say that this is also you know a woke generation a woke generation where you have uh, claims that Temite have eaten or at 17.128 billion naira expenditure voucher. Okay, so um, um, the present and past administration of the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund, that's the NSITF, has been under fire from the Senate for failing to justify the spending of 17.158 billion naira in 2018. I mean, in 2013 which required evidence documents, uh, some of which were alleged to have been eaten by termite. And so you have this audit or scrutiny that's going on, and all of a sudden you have this report that, hey, termite had eaten all of that. Now, let's also look at this, because the 17.15 billion naira stated in the 2018 audit uh, that was reported was that the total amount of money transferred by the NSITF from, uh, you know, some accounts or banks, I would not like to mention, into various, were transferred into various untraceable accounts belonging to individuals and companies from January to December 2013. And so the Auditor General's office had in 2018 audited the report and raised 50 different queries bordering on alleged misappropriation of funds by the management of the agency, which has been looked into by the Senate Committee on Public Account. And so um, the excuse is that, um, you know, termite has eaten that particular voucher. That's what was said. And so, hey, how do you explain that? You know, there's an expenditure which was already captured. I mean, it was being audited. <laughs> there was an audit in 2018. Uh, from 2013, now you're saying that Tamar has eaten that voucher. So it, it could just be, you know, one of those 
uh, politics, one of those things that we get to play, we're just playing the game. Uh, because this is not the first time that we talk about animals or, I, I don't know if an insect, <laughs> you say termite is an animal, but this is not the first time. We've had different experiences. Uh, once upon a time, 36 million naira was swallowed by snakes. The story can go on. At the time, we're talking about the Nigerian Examination Board. 36 million naira. Snake actually swallowed it, you know, when the clerk was being uh, questioned. She even came out to say, hey, she was not the one who made that story, but it was actually the board that came up with the story. And uh, she was suspended afterwards. And so it's not the first time. So it might just be part of, you know, our system that we, we you know, go in this light. And so we continue to say that uh, different animals and different things. We've had goats, you have gorilla, monkeys, swallowing money. And uh, because I don't know if, if these animals have been arrested or prosecuted or looked for in any way, but um, uh, this is where we are. Hmm. All right, this is where we are. We have more, more of these uh, uh, stories coming up. Of course, the uh, Nigerian comic um, and uh, social media influencer, like they're called these days, uh, Mr. Macaroni is the name he goes by. It's quite popular for putting out very, very funny, you know, very funny skits, I could call them. You know, these are sketches on Twitter, on Instagram, rather. And that's a huge following. And um, he's become even more popular for his, um, his social advocacy or activism, let's call it that. Especially with the NSAS protests, you know, it was one of those uh, celebrities who came out to, uh, you know, be counted in the, the protests against police brutality. Um, he has disclosed shocking claims on his Twitter accounts like you know mercy that um, he received threats against his life and also there have been threats against his family for not endorsing a certain candidate ahead of the 2023 uh, presidential election you can see a shot of that tweet uh, some uh, i think a part of the tweet on your screen there uh, he explained in that recent tweet how a woman had recently threatened his family for not supporting her candidate uh, the funny man also said he has been subjected to online attacks on several occasions for not supporting any presidential candidate ahead of next year's election. Uh, the comedian further said he remained unconcerned by the threats, also advising Nigerians on making the right decisions during uh, the upcoming election. This is what he said, quote, I went to visit my mother two weeks ago. I was giving out money to some people in the neighborhood, as I always do uh, any time I go home. A woman walked up to me and asked why I am against a particular candidate. I said, I am not against anyone. All I want is a better country. And that can only happen when we vote in good leaders. The next thing she said is that I should better watch myself because they know where my people live. I asked if that was a threat and she continued by saying all sorts. My sister and manager were with me and I have a video, he says. I can go on about different threats that I've received from some party members or supporters of a presidential candidate because somehow they believe that I'm against their choice. Cyberbullying via different online attacks and tribal propaganda, he says. There is so much dishonesty going on and it gets worse by the day, but my message will never change. Nigerians have suffered enough. Look around you and look at the serious challenges we're facing as people. There is no Messiah anywhere. Um, however, to stand a chance for a better nation come 2023, we must select the suitable, most suitable options to occupy positions of leadership in the country. All right. Um, I think, um, so that, that's that, Mercy. That's what, what he put out. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, it's, uh, I, I would rather say that uh, if you have actually received any threats, because, you know, from his tweet, he talked about someone who accosted him or confronted him, and if he thinks that his life is under threat, then he should report to the appropriate authorities. You have the Nigerian police right there, so, I mean, report to the police and let the, you know, uh, the law take its course. So, if your life is under threat, not necessarily that particular one, you have people who are tweeting and you have names, then you can go ahead and lodge a complaint with the police force and we expect that the law will take its course. But in the course of all of this, we understand that uh, the essence that political parties exist is that they will contest for election and they would win. And one is not surprised by the approach that uh, several political parties would take or people would definitely take just to get what they want. And so you have some people would say it's just the Machiavellian kind of politics where, you know, you know the end actually justifies the means. I mean, it doesn't really matter how you get it, but as long as you get it, so get anyway. But we're saying that, hey, election is not a do or die affair. 
it's fine, it's okay to support a particular candidate, it's okay to not support a certain candidate. Everyone has a right to support whoever they want to support. But let's not do it in a violent way. Let's not do it and become a threat to one another and, you know, begin to threaten ourselves and, you know, begin to constitute a nuisance and say things and comments that would, ex you know, um, set up ourselves against ourselves. That's not what we, we want. It's, it's okay for anyone to say, hey, I don't want to support anyone. I want to support this. I want to support that. And that's what we're talking about. Okay, so in, in the course of, uh, you know, the election, let's just go out there and support who we want to support without being violent and without being hateful. And that's the size of Top Trending this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of the National Dailies. Please stay with us.